Hey everyone, Santai here. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, today, I want to talk to you all about Title Update 3 and what it means for Longsword. Talking about the new skills and armor and all those cool things. So yeah, first off, the skills, specifically Wind Mantle. Uh, so Wind Mantle is a nice and interesting new skill that comes on the Risen Kushal Deora set. Basically what it does is it increases our Wirebug recovery rate um, after we use a Wirebug attack. So right now you can see that my gauge is green. And when it's green, I will charge faster. If I don't attack for a while, it'll go back to normal. If I sheath, it'll go back to normal. But while it's green, it'll charge up faster. The amount it charges up depends on both how much I attack with Wirebug attacks and also the level. So if you attack a whole bunch with Silk Bind, Sakura Slash, uh, it'll charge up quite a bit faster, about 15% faster, and it stacks with Wirebug Whisper, which is another skill that increases your recovery rate. Now, in theory, the skill is really, really good for the Longsword because a lot of our damage is linked behind our Wirebug attacks. So either the Soaring Kick for damage or the Silkbind Sakura Slash to charge up our gauge. So in theory, this is really, really good. In practice, uh, because whenever we sheath, we lose the buff, uh, it's a bit harder to use. Uh, especially because of Sakura Slash, um, after you Sakura Slash, you automatically sheath. Uh, as you can see here, I sheath and the buff goes away. So you need to manually cancel the sheath um, you need to manually cancel the sheath by using either Special Sheath or Sacred Sheath, so it sort of forces your next action as well. Now I think there are two really good uses for this skill that sort of make it really nice. So one, um, if you're waking up a monster for example, um, after you wake up a monster you can spam Sakura Slashes, and because you're using multiple Sakura Slashes you'll get the full benefit of your Wind Mantle. Call up, this basically means that you'll get your wire bugs about five seconds faster. You can attack a bit and it'll have some really nice bonus, at least for that short time. So practically it'll help decrease your cooldowns after a monster wakes up, which is nice, but not really anything you want to seek out. It's not something you're going to directly build for, it's just a nice bonus. The other case where I think Wind Metal is very good is if you are very, very good at the longsword. Uh, so if you use Harvest the Moon, which is the Silk Bind skill that increases your damage of your counters when you haven't sheathed, uh, if you're really good at using that, you're probably not sheathing much anyway. Uh, so if you can do that, um, Wind Mantle is a nice, basically, free bonus. For normal play, like for how I play, I usually run a lot, I charge a lot, I use this double drawn slash for nice poke, nice burst, so I'm sheathing a lot. I'm getting hit a lot, I'm using the uh, Wirefall a lot. If you use any of those, you're going to lose the buff. So practically, it's not a huge benefit, it's a nice bonus, but it's something you get for free, or as an extra, rather than something you aim for. Again, unless you're very, very good and you're using Harvest Moon, you're using this, this still is really good. It stacks with Wirebug Whisperer, nice 20% cooldown reduction. So yeah, it's pretty skill-based, but in general, I'm not really going to aim for it. The other interesting skill is Powder Mantle. So basically what Powder Mantle does is if I attack enough times, I'm eventually gonna get this red aura. Um, so you get Powder Mantle off the Risen Teostra gear, and as you can see now, I have this red aura on me. Now I'll have the red aura when I get attacked, I do a decent amount of damage for free on the enemy just for being attacked. What you wanna do though is you basically wanna wait or keep attacking or just not get hit. And eventually this horror will turn blue, eventually. And oh, there we go. And once it's blue, the next time attacked, I'll do a whole lot of bonus damage. Uh, you can see I did 523 damage, which is, again, quite nice. More damage is also good. Uh, so yeah, about 500 damage every, what, 30 seconds, every minute or so, which is quite nice. Um, it's not gonna like completely change anything, but it's, as usual, a nice bonus. So both of these skills, they're good if you can get them, but they aren't something you're going to try and go out of your way to get. Now, the other monster they added is Chaotic Gormagala, which added a whole bunch of really interesting and weird um, skills and things. So one, uh, let's talk about the weapons first. So the weapon is weird. Um, so if you look in the status, you can see right now that my crit rate is negative 30, 50. Basically, this has a negative crit rate and a positive crit rate. So here, under these conditions, 30% of the time, I will land a negative crit, which does 25% less raw damage. The other, now 45% of the time, I will have a normal crit. 
the remainder of the time, so that is 25% of the time, I will do a normal damage. So yeah, I get some negative crit, which is pretty bad. However, um, if you overcome bloodlust, so right now this still has bloodlust, um, you overcome bloodlust by doing a whole lot of damage. I think it's motion value of 600. So basically if you just attack enough, you'll eventually get there. Um, let me suck or slash a whole lot. So eventually I will recover and that negative affinity becomes positive affinity. So I'll go from negative 30 to plus 30. Uh, because of bloodlust, you also get plus 25% um, after you overcome uh, Frenzy. So yeah, you get basically a huge crit bonus after your recover. So you can see now my bloodlust was recovered. I have the blue symbol in the top left of the screen. And if you look at my status, I should shoot up to 100% affinity. So yeah, it's a nice and interesting weapon. Um, unfortunately for the longsword, as cool as it is, it's not very good. Mostly because getting high affinity with the longsword is relatively straightforward. So we can use weakness exploit pretty well. We can use crit eye, of course, and we can also use maximi pretty well. And also a lot of good longswords have high affinity. Because of that, we don't really need the affinity from Bloodlust or the um, weapon itself. So it's it basically gives us more affinity than we need. It's It gives us more affinity than we need when it gives us affinity, and takes away affinity when it shouldn't. So yeah, it's interesting, it's cool, but it's not very good. Now, the other skills it gives us, the skills the armor gives us, are really, really weird. So. You can see right now, perhaps, that my health is red. Basically, when you are in the blue scroll uh, with a skill Berserk, which you get from the Celtic Gorm Gala gear, your health becomes red instead of green, and it slowly decays. While it is red, you are going to die, which basically means that I am invincible to dying from damage, but my health will slowly decay. It's basically a weird defensive skill that sort of makes you immune to damage, but slowly, slowly die. Um, you can heal it up, um, but yeah, it's it's weird. Uh, the other interesting skill it gives us is Strife. Basically, the more red health we have, it gives us a boost to damage. But yeah, so this is more of a weird defensive skill than anything else. Um, or you can just stay in red and not bother with it and get bloodlust. So yeah, I'll probably do a full video on this skill later on if I think it's interesting enough, but for now it's just an interesting defensive skill that could have potential with other skills and other sources of damage. But yeah, so basically those are the cool new skills. So as for the gear itself, um, the Risen Teostra gear is very, very good. The chest especially is like best in slot chest now. You should almost always use the Risen Teostra chest. The helm is also quite nice. And the legs are pretty decent well, as well if you're using fire. Um, it has fire attack and Teosha blessing, which really boosts your fire damage. Uh, the Nephilim helm is a highly efficient gear piece, so in general, which is quite good. Uh, also, sorry, the Risen Teosha also gives the powder metal skill for more damage, the bonus skill I was talking about earlier. Uh, the Risen Kshala pieces are decent, not as good as the Teosha gear, but still decent. And many of them have the Wind Mantle skill, the nice bonus skill that increases, that gives you cooldown reduction on your wire bugs. And also some of the Chaotic Gore pieces are good if you want to use Bloodlust or you want to play with Berserk. So yeah, there are some pretty interesting new gear. Um, as for decorations, we get some really cool ones. So Element Exploit is a great one point skill. So what this skill did, uh, it was on the Silver Soul Mail before. With one point, it gives you 10% more elemental damage if a monster's elemental weak point is 20 or higher. That's huge. 10% more elemental damage for one skill point is massive. Uh, so before, it sort of forced you to use the Silver Soul Mail for elemental builds. Now you do not need to use the Silver Soul Mail. You can just use the um, use the decoration, which means you can use some other gear like the cool new Risen Kaiser, the Risen Teostra chest piece. Other decorations include Flame Scale and Iron Shell. So these are Teostra Blessing and Kushala Blessing respectively. They have some nice weird bonuses. Um, the main one are the first two levels. So the first two levels, Teostra Blessing gives you 5% and 10% more Fire or Blast on your weapon. And Iron Shell, the Kushala Blessing one, gives you more Water and Ice. So more elemental damage, which is always good. Also some other nice ones, so you can get Blood Ride, which is the one that heals you when you're attacking a broken part. Nice comfort skill for defensive stuff. And Grinder is now a Grinder S+, plus, which makes Grinder skills slightly better. They still aren't great, but they're better. So yeah, um, 
basically just a quick note, um, elemental attack or elemental blessing. So both of these things, both of these skills increase your elemental damage. Um, blessing gives you five or 10% at level one and level two respectively, which is really, really strong with just one or two points. Element attack is really weak at one or two points. It gives you like element plus two, element plus three, which is not really much, but element attack three and four, and especially five are really, really strong. So if you have a lot of free one slots, basically what you want to do is if you can get element attack four, uh, you max element attack first. Uh, if you already have blessing one from other source, you get element attack three and uh, element attack three is fine. Otherwise, if you don't have enough skill points to get element attack four or three, uh, you max out blessing first and then you put your extra point into element attack if needed. Basically what this means is, for example, if you just have, if you have four free one slots, you can get element attack four, so you use all of your one slots on element attack. If you have two one slots, uh, you don't have enough to get element attack four, so you get blessing two. So you're gonna get, say, Teosha blessing two. If you have three points, um, you still don't have enough to get element attack four, so you will get uh, two points of the blessing to get Teosha blessing two, and then one point to element attack if you want to get element attack one. So yeah, uh, basically you want to use both if you can, but if you're going to pick, if you don't have enough skill points to get both, follow these rules. That's the most element damage you can get briefly. Um, other brief interesting changes. Basically one, uh, we get up to eight curious weapon augments before we had up to six. So more stats in our weapons. Um, if you go raw eight instead of raw six, you just get five more raw, which is always nice. Um, Element six, so before we couldn't get up to element five, now I can get element six, and element six gives us five more element. Uh, every element level on our weapon before gave us plus three, so getting plus five is always nice. Um, so yeah, it basically makes weapons and numbers higher in general. And also they changed how curious armor pieces work, how curious armor augments work. Uh, basically they gave us some armor augmenting options, which should make it easier to get higher level skills. And also they increase the pool of skills, which should change the way career crafting works. Uh, this has not been data mined yet. I think the Tilnor is working on it. Uh, once the Tilnor works on it, I'll make a video recalculating the probabilities and talking about that. And with that, I think it's time that we discuss the builds. So yeah, uh, without any new good weapons added, the weapons themselves are gonna stay the same. It's just the builds are gonna change around them. So with that being said, the best weapons are still going to be the Waffen Delayed Luna and the Cactus Himmel, and you can see the builds for those on screen. So the Luna build uses the Risen Kushala Glare and the Risen Kaiser Mail. Everything's going to be using the Risen Kaiser Mail because that piece, that piece is really, really good, which means every build is going to have the Powder Mantle, that skill that makes the explosions. Uh, some builds are going to have the Risen Kushala Glare, which have Wind Mantle, the skill that decreases your wirebot cooldown. I think the skill is quite good, but again, I don't think this is going to completely change the way uh, things are. Uh, all else being equal, I'm going to recommend Wind Mantle over anything else, but I'm not going to try and lose too much damage for it. Otherwise, I've started that. So this build uses the Risen Mizuha Sleeves for a build-up boost. Um, so it has a one piece from every Risen Elder Dragon, which is pretty cool, as well as one piece from the Scorn Magna Malo, the Sins the Grudge Tacits, uh, for Mail of Hellfire, which is always going to be a really good piece and the Silver Salgaries, which is just a general nice piece for the Longsword. So basically every build is going to have the Risen Kaiser Mail uh, and the Sins the Grudge Tacits. These Poison builds are going to use the Risen Mizuha Sleeves for build-up boost. Other ones will use Barrier Gloves. Outside of that, the head and the leg pieces are going to change. But yeah, also we're going to use the Raw 8 Weapon Curio Augment. Now for the Cactus build, um, we're going to change the headpiece to the Risen Kaiser Horns and then change our decorations around quite a bit. So we are going to be using Wind uh, wind Mantle here, but it's going to be getting a second uh, point of Powder Mantle. Uh, it has more damage this way. If you do want to use Wind Mantle, there's an alternative build which I'm going to show on screen now. Um, but yeah, I'm honestly still not quite sure which one I think is good how practically impactful Wind Mantle is. So yeah, if you do think Wind Mantle is great or not as great, uh, let me know in the comments below. Genuinely, I genuinely want to know, um, and I'll use that to inform future builds. So yeah, if you have any strong opinions on Wind Mantle versus Powder Mantle versus nothing, please let me know. Seriously. Uh, so yeah, now with that, uh, let's talk about the elemental builds. Um, so. One new and interesting thing is that because of how many extra slots we have um, and how good our armor pieces are, 
there is now a really, really good, like, pure fire and elemental build again uh, without using the Hector Simmel, and that using the Volcanic Apocalypse. Because fire, as always, now gets a whole lot of really cool things. Uh, the Risen Kaiser Kuis, Kuis, I'm not sure what it is, has a lot of really nice um, points specifically for fire. So it has Fire Attack 2 and Tiushtra Blessing 2, both of which really, really, really increase your fire damage. And of course, you can fit the Elemental Exploit uh, decoration, which means you can use the Risen Kaiser Mail. Uh, this also has Wind Mantle, but because we have so many slots now, we can use a whole bunch of slots to get Purple Sharpness and then boost it with Protective Polish, which ends up happening here. So we get an absolutely massive um, effective element. Uh, this is really, really huge. So this is good for monsters that are really, really weak to element. Um, alternatively, um, no, sorry, the next element is Water. Um, so this one benefits from Kushala Blessing. Uh, no good armor pieces about the Grand Kushala Blessing, but yeah. Um, unlike the previous build, this one uses the Kaiser Horn, so you don't get Wind Mantle. Again, let me know if you want a Wind Mantle set. But yeah, the element uh, value increases hugely because of the element exploit decoration, letting us use the Risen Kaiser Mail, and the Kushala Blessing, the Iron Shell Blessing, uh, the Iron Shell decoration. Really, really huge um, water element now. Uh, Thunder is going to be mostly the same, so again we're changing out the headpiece and the legpiece. For the headpiece we're using Wind Mantle, the Kushala Glare here, and the Risen Kaiser Quiz for the legpiece. Um, mostly the same here, um, but now we get extra handicraft for just extra sharpness to last a bit longer. Uh, general nice build for high Thunder weak enemies. And finally for Dragon, this is funny, no. did I miss Ice? I miss Ice. Uh, for Ice, um, yeah, so this one uses the, this one uses Wind Mantle, this one uses Kushala Blessing 2 to get high ice damage, and yeah, so specifically the Fire, Water, and Ice weapons get the Blessing skill for massive elemental damage boosts, Thunder and Dragon less so, uh, because um, you can boost Thunder and Dragon damage with Storm Soul, which you get from Thunder Serpent Narwa and I think Wind Serpent Ibushi. Those skills aren't out yet, so we don't actually have the massive Thunder and Dragon elemental boosting skills. Uh, but yeah, so Ice gets massive elemental damage now as well uh, with Wind Mantle, and this is the Dragon build. Um, relatively lower Dragon stats. Um, Kaiser Horns for Powder Mantle. This one has the Flaming Espinar Seal for Intrepid Heart, which is a nice defensive skill, and has a few free one slots. Um, because the Red Flash has such massive long wide sharpness, um, speed sharpening isn't too useful, so those spots are mostly free, use them for whatever defensive skill or whatever you want, or just for speed sharpening anyway. It's not a bad skill. And yeah, so those are the main elemental builds. Uh, finally, as a bonus, um, here are going to be some status builds. Um, doo -doo -doo. So these are the blast builds. Um, again, these builds aren't great for damage in general, but can be nice for breaking parts or whatever else, or for multiplayer player if you just want one person doing blast damage. Um, so yes, um, because of the presence of the Grinder Plus decoration, Grinder S is, uh, the Grinder builds are actually considerably better. Still not great compared to non-blast builds, but so before you needed Grinder to be active about 60% of the time, I think. Now it only needs to be active about 30, 40% of the time. So yeah, use, um, the boss build if you are comfortable with it. I'm mean, using the grinder build for boss if you're comfortable with it. And finally, you can see sleep and paralyze here. And yeah, again, these builds are mostly the same um, as the other ones. So, Risen Kaiser Mail, Barith Fan Braces, and Sinister Grudge Tacits, um, or the Risen Mizuha uh, sleeves for the arm pieces with Silver Soul Groups and the Kaiser Helm. Uh, less good for damage, but nice for team support and whatever else. So yeah, um, that's basically all of the builds uh, for this title update before Curia. So in general, yeah, we have some new decorations, which particularly boost elemental damage, then being element exploit and the blessings. And we have new armor pieces and weapon augment slots to improve overall damage. Uh, in particular, we also get powder mantle and slash or kushala, uh, the wind mantle for free, which can have nice effects. Uh, tell me what you think of them. Tell me if you think they actually make a difference to your playstyle and that'll definitely change how I do the builds later on. But yeah, overall we get a sort of boost from Tile Up to 2 in terms of damage. We get about 5% extra damage from things to everything else. So yeah, uh, now we are considerably stronger than we were last patch. But yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Tomorrow I'll be going through the Lance builds, 
And then once the Tilnor does data mining, I'll do a video talking about the probability of getting the different um, gear you want, and then do practical curio builds after that. So yeah. So always thank you all so much for watching. Uh, please do tell, please do tell me about wind mantle versus power mantle, and yeah, hope to see you all next time. Thank you for watching and happy hunting. Bye.